Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Cody. <laughs> Welcome to worship this beautiful day that God has given us. It is good to gather together as God's church out in the beauty of God's creation. So I appreciate your flexibility, your patience. Uh, in a few moments, hopefully it'll be well rewarded with something cold. So a little bit of teaser of what's to follow uh, as we conclude our worship service. But we're not going to fast forward through it. Um, we're going to gather together and remember that it is church camp season. And we are sending a few of our best back to camp. We had just um, had a group there for three days last week. And it was a wonderful time. The facilities are incredible. Uh, the mission and ministry that is going on at Bedford Camp and Conference Center is incredible. So this week, uh, starting tomorrow, we are going to send Whitney and Luke, Raceland, Landon, and Leslie Thomas to Bedford Camp and Conference Center. And just in case you want to drop them a little bit of mail, that is at 33 Church Camp Road, Bedford, Indiana, 47421. That address will also go out in the Monday follow-up email as well. I know that there's a tradition in some camps that if you get a piece of mail, you have to sing for it. So, do with that information what you will. As you can tell, since we are outside, we have pulled back on some of our um, COVID protocols. The um, biggest announcement related to that is that since we are outside and the air is moving through the space, we're not going to require masks, and we're going to sing, and we're going to sing all verses to the songs that are printed in your bulletin. So there's a couple of things there. One, make sure you've got a bulletin with the words on it in case you don't know them by heart. They're on the back side of the bulletin. Um, two, we're going to sing all the words that are there. We, um, in the past, have kind of picked some verses out, but we're going to sing everything, uh, every verse to every song, except for the communion song today. Please be sure to be in touch with your elder about next week's worship service. We will be back in the sanctuary, and um, our associate regional minister, Reverend Carolyn Reed, will be with us um, next week. And I have been informed that there will be a cold, the emphasis on cold, box lunch following worship next week. I'm not sure if it's just because it's a cold cut or what's going on there as well. Friends, I was glad when they said unto me, let us enter into the house of the Lord. So let us do so with praise and thanksgiving and song. Okay. You're too tall. I'm sorry. You're telling me. So join with me, oh beautiful for spacious skies. If you want to stand and sing, stand and sing. If you want to sit and sing, sit and sing. We're just going to be nice and easy about everything. Oh beautiful for spacious skies. See 
sounded great. Everybody was so nice to hear everybody singing. That's awesome. I was just going to echo that. Oh my goodness. Sean Small, that is an outstanding outfit. Even though Matt just said, find your seats, let's go ahead and stand so that we can join together in the saying of this responsive call to worship that is also printed in your bulletin. It looks a little bit different, so there'll be a reading, an extended reading, and then you'll hear the key words to cue you in to say those couple of sayings as we continue our worship together this day. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for the natural majesty and beauty of this land. They restore us, even though at times we lead to their destruction. Heal us. We thank you for the great resources of this nation. They make us rich, though we have often hoarded them away. Forgive us. We thank you for the men and women who have made this country strong. They are models for us, though we often fall far short of the example that they set. Inspire us. We thank you for the torch of liberty that has been lit in this land. It has drawn people from every nation, though we have often hidden from its light. Renew us. We thank you for the faith we have inherited in all its rich variety. It sustains our life, though we may have been faithless again and again. Renew us. Help us, O oh Lord, to finish the good work here begun. Strengthen our efforts to blot out ignorance and prejudice and to abolish poverty and crime and hasten the day when all people with many voices in one united chorus will join together and praise your holy name. Amen. Amen. Though we do not have a children's sermon this morning, I invite you to share a sign of peace in whatever way that is most comfortable with you, with those around you on this day. May the Lord be with you. Someone once said, it is good to have so much peace to share with one another that we have to be called back to continue our worship together. I kind of like that. Let us continue our time now together in worship as we hear a reading from the psalmist. We're going to hear together from Psalm 48. This is the common English translation of the Bible. This psalm is titled a, a song, a psalm of the Korahites, and it begins this way. In the city belonging to our God, the Lord is great and is so worthy of praise. The Lord's holy mountain is a beautiful summit, the joy of the whole world. Mount Zion in the far north is the city of the great king. God is in its fortifications revealing God's self as a place of safety. Look, the kings assembled themselves, advancing all together. When they saw it, they were stunned. They panicked and they ran away frightened. Trembling took hold of them right there 
just as though a woman giving birth. Or like the east wind when it smashes the ships of Tarshish. Just like we had heard, now we have seen it for ourselves in the city of the Lord of heavenly forces, in the city of our God. May God make it secure forever. Selah. We dwell on your faithful love, God, in your temple. Your praise, God, just like your reputation, extends to the far corners of all the earth. Your strong hand is filled with righteousness. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the towns of Judah rejoice because of your acts of justice. Walk around Zion. Go all the way around it. Count its towers. Examine its defenses closely. Tour its fortifications so that you may tell future generations. This is God, our God, forever and always. God is the one who will lead us even to the very end. May God's blessing be with all those who hear these words on this day. As we continue our time together, we continue to do so in the spirit of worship, holding those names that we have that have been imprinted on our spirit, as well as those names that are listed on the back of your bulletins. We continue to pray for our shared ministry together. We continue to hold in prayer all that we have left yet to experience, not just on this holiday, but in the days and weeks to come. So I invite you now to join with me in a word of prayer, a prayer that is titled A Prayer for the Nation. And then at the conclusion of the prayer, we will say the Lord's Prayer together using trespasses. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Cody, let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, with truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who came from many nations with many different languages a united people. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there might be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I have to admit to you, in my vast and extensive knowledge of the Psalms, I'm not quite sure that I have ever interacted much with this particular Psalm. 
I imagine that you have those go-to messages that you look to in Scripture. I imagine the familiar Psalms are there. The 38th Psalm or Psalm 119 or even another Psalm that has particularly spoken to you in a time in your life, perhaps when you didn't even expect it to do so. That's kind of how this psalm has gripped me this week. And it's interesting because I love what the psalmist does in describing this city of God. And it, it got my imagination turning and thinking about what would my own description of the city of God look like. We have hints of it in the book of Revelation. That is with no S, by the way. We have hints of it throughout our holy scriptures, but I wonder what our city of heaven looks like. The psalmist reminds us that God is throughout the very foundations of Zion, that even the defensive structures have God's very imprint on it. Think about that. Think about a defensive structure that is so imbued with this essence of God that it in turn even becomes a vehicle or a construction of peace and of love and of mercy. And then we're told very quickly that it is so amazing to behold that even the greatest of the leaders in the world come and are amazed and leave Trembling. I've had a couple of those trembling moments in my life. I wonder if you have as well. Those moments when you have no doubt that God is with you in and through you and that everything you experience is as if you are standing on that holy mountain. I had a couple of those mountaintop experiences This last week, literally, as we looked out at the Overlook Lodge and caught the um, shimmering glimmer of the East Fork or the West Fork of the White River, um, I know that the song Back Home Again in Indiana talks of the beauty and grandeur of the Wabash. I'm not sure that they also don't have in mind this river as well. And then I was reminded again of those places that have been holy in our lives. Those places where we feel and know and can just experience the fullness of God's abundance. And that is not just located at 33 Church Camp Road, although it is a particular slice of it. But I think at times we can look and experience those cities of God in our everyday. Perhaps it's coming home after a long day of work. Perhaps it's being greeted by a pet or by a loved one. Perhaps it's that space where you are just overwhelmed by the immensity of God. Perhaps it's a starry night looking up to the heavens and remembering that promise that God gave to Abraham. Maybe it's even in our own sanctuary where the sun comes through the stained glass window just right to where you go in and make sure all of the lights off because you feel as though the entire space is alive with God's love. You know, it's easy to think how powerful these words are given to the psalmist and how the psalmist does a wonderful job of exclaiming and proclaiming these experiences to those who would be in the worship setting hearing these words as well as to all those who continue to hear these words in the generations to come. You see, I think that's the beauty of the psalms. It gives us these examples and these reminders that we don't have to go very far to experience our own place of God's abundance, our own cities and temples, our own places where every stone is as if it was filled with God's spirit. 
Now here's the beauty given to us, particularly on this day, that we get to experience the freedom in acknowledging those moments in our lives. No one tells us what our own experiences have to look like. No one can say to us, that doesn't count. No one can say to us, that's not a living example of the coming of the realm of God. But we live in a place that allows every individual the freedom to experience God's abundance. So I don't know what your city on a hill or your shining Mount Zion or your place where God is most prevalent to you. I don't know what that looks like. But I do know that you have a place that speaks to you just like the places that the psalmist writes about. So maybe as you take some time during this holiday or tomorrow or in the weeks to come, I hope you take a moment to soak in those places. To celebrate what they mean to you so that they might inspire you. So that you can continue to be on the lookout for all of those places where God's light continues to shine. And you too can sing just like the psalmist of the incredible things that God is doing in your midst. One of the things that always amazes me is gathering around this table. Now here's the beautiful part about this table. The elements and the things that are set upon it look familiar, but there's a little bit of difference in them. It's not the same table that we experience in the sanctuary, but it represents the same thing. And it's a table that is set in our midst for all those who believe, for all those who want to come taste and experience God's love, for all of those who have questions, for all of those who seek to experience what it means to be children of God. Friends, that table is again set in our midst and all all are invited to partake. Let us do so, remembering these words. You see, it was on that night in the upper room, as the cross was looming in the future, that Jesus took time to share a meal and to remind those disciples just who it is that Jesus continually points to. And he gave them something to remember him by, even though they didn't know it at the time. Simple elements. Bread broken and a cup poured out. And it is that bread and that cup that we remember and we hear these words that it was on that night where Jesus took a loaf of bread and after giving thanks for it, he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to those he was with saying, take and eat for this is my body, that which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after equally giving thanks for it, he gave him the cup. And he said, take and drink from this cup, all of you. For this cup represents a new covenant, that which is poured out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness and for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. You see, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ until that day when he comes again. Let us now sing our communion hymn in remembrance of me.
Loving God, you have blessed us so. From being able to enjoy this shelter house to being part of this church family. From the sacrifice of your son on our behalf to keeping you as the central focus of our lives. From trusting in you, Lord, to knowing that our sins will be forgiven. From being blessed to live in this great country to having the freedom to worship openly and freely. May the receiving of this loaf and cup draw us closer to you, increase our faith, and help us appreciate our many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So friends, at this time you're invited to take whatever it is that represents to you I'm sorry that it's still a wafer, the body of Christ. And in the same way, let us too share from the cup of the new covenant. As we continue our time together this morning, we have turned now to this time where we are invited to give out of our abundance, to share a little bit of what God has so richly blessed us with, to continue to be the people that God is calling us to be, to continue to be a community that seeks to learn the word, to live the grace, and above all else, to continue to share the love. So as you consider your gift this day, and as you consider the many ways that you continue to give, do so knowing that every gift that we make is good and holy and acceptable and pleasing in God's sight. We'll have the basket continued to be available in addition to those ways that we have given and uh, the non-traditional ways that we can give. The link is included in your bulletin as well as uh, it's shared about anywhere that you look. So let us now share a blessing over these gifts. Holy and gracious one, we thank you this day. We thank you for the chance to worship outside in your abundance. We thank you for the gifts that have been given and the gifts that will be given to make sure that we can continue to be the community of faith that you are calling each and every one of us to participate in. Be with all those who have given this day and be with those who continue to give in many ways. May your abundant love be ever clear in their eyes. All of this we ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. So friends, before we hear the words of our benediction, I would like to remind you that next week we will, of course, be back in the sanctuary, followed by a box meal as we celebrate all that it has meant to be on this journey of faith together. Be well and be safe as you celebrate this Independence Day. 
Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to stand as you are able to hear these words of blessing and benediction, and then to join together in the singing of my country, tis of me. Hear now these words of blessing and benediction. You are a child of God, divinely inspired and holy made. Go now, living in to that promise and in peace. And all of God's people said, Amen.